Hi there, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the second video with the restoration of this Brown SK25. In this video, I focus primarily on the electronics, get that all sorted out, replace any components that need replacing, do the testing, and then get on to the actual alignment of the IF and the RF for both the AM and the FM. And after that, uh, the only outstanding task will be the cabinet, which I will do in the third and final video. So if you enjoy this sort of thing, stick around, enjoy the video. But before we carry on, I just want to thank the sponsors of the video, PCB Way. You can find them at PCBWay.com, and they're the company I use for all my uh, PCBs and uh, recently quite a bit of 3D printing as well. If you look at the range of uh, services and products they offer, it's incredible. But one thing they're uh, actually promoting now is the PCB assembly, which allows you to order 1 to 20 pieces of uh, assembled PCBs for a really low price of $29. Give them the parameters and get them to calculate. And very importantly, they offer worldwide free shipping for the PCB assemblies, which includes the stencil. The range of products they've got, I'm sure you'll find something for your own needs, as have I. Well, I've made quite a bit of progress. I've gone through the entire radio. I've checked all components. I've replaced those that need replacing. And I have actually tested it before this, but um, let me show you what the result was. These were all the components that I replaced. Exactly two capacitors, the electrolytics. One of them is the cathode bypass and the other one is the discriminator cap. And then, uh, what is it, two, four, six, eight, nine resistors. Some of these were pretty bad. One of them is completely open. More or less what I expected. These resistors can go either way. Most of them went very, very high. But let's have a quick look and see what the capacitors are like. This one is the discriminator cap. It's supposed to be 4.7 microfarads, reading 6.8. And this is the cathode bypass, it's supposed to be 25, reading 38. But that's not the worst of it. Let me show you the leakage. This is the 25 microfarads at 15 volts. So we've got to be very careful with the voltage setting on the capacitor leakage tester. I've got it across here and I put it on, on the 100 milliamp scale, that's normal. It does creep up. On the 10 milliamp scale, <laughs> it's reading more than one milliamp. If I put it up to 15, that's at 13. Remember, this is supposed to be 15 volts. At uh, It's a 10 milliamp scale, so it's reading 8 milliamps of leakage on that capacitor. So it's totally, totally useless. This is the 4.7 microfarad discriminator cap. It's uh, 4.7, 70 volts. Let's leave this low and put it on 100 milliamp scale. and go up a bit. Let's leave it there. 10 milliamp scale. <laughs> it's leaking uh, 1 milliamp. It's coming down a bit. It's sort of reforming, but it's gone. Just going up closer to 70. It'll reform for a while, but it'll still be way over in terms of leakage, so these guys are totally useless. And not surprisingly, the ones the um, the film caps I found in there were perfectly good. No leakage at all. Absolutely nothing. They read like new and the value is spot on. So those didn't need to be changed. I tested all of them. So I was happy with the, just leaving them in place. And here are the insides. We can see the resistors I've changed. Some of them I use metal film. On wherever there was a bit of power I used the uh, 2 watt resistors and very few I left in place because they tested perfectly. Those are the capacitors I checked. That one, that one, that one over there on the side. And there's another one here somewhere, that one there. Tested perfectly fine. I was very, very careful because this thing is, it's almost like a work of art, the way they've wired this. It's all very tight, but it's very well laid out. And obviously the one thing you don't want to do is mess around with the, with the lead dress the way the, um, the layout is, because you can affect it, you can create oscillations and so on. Also, there are situations like this where, if you're not careful, the wire will short to a, uh, a wire next door, so you've got to be careful with that as well. This is the discriminator cap. It was 4 microfarads. I put in a 4.7. There's the cathode bypass under there. That was uh, 25. I put in a 22. And I think that's about all that I have to show. There was nothing else that needed the tension here, all these ceramics were perfectly fine. So basically it took a hell of a long time just to replace, what is it, 11 components. But um, you've got to take the time, 
and you've got to do it very, very carefully and very neatly. And every time you replace a section of components, switch it on, make sure that what you had before you still have, which is reception. I do have a problem with the AM. It's very, very deaf. But we'll come to that when we start looking at the alignment. I don't think um, that is a result of any of the components. I know the one component that was open was the screen grid resistor. I think it was for the, what is it, for the EF89. That's the one that was completely open. It's a 4.7 meg. Uh, they had an open resistor in there. Mind you, open is almost the same as 4.7 meg, but obviously it's there for a reason. But I don't believe that made any difference to the reception itself. I still haven't tested the tubes. So what I want to do now is turn it around and show you what we've got. I've got the mini whip antenna ready. Let's plug it into the back here. Now these two antenna sockets serve for both the AM and the FM, which is a little bit strange, but that's the way it is. Okay, I've got it on FM, put the volume halfway. Now, it sounds a little tinny because this thing is out of the cabinet. I think inside the cabinet will get better bass, but we do have the back tone control, which is um, it's a set it and leave it situation. Don't particularly like it, but that's the way they did it. So FM is fine. Now let's look at AM. And I'm going to change this to the antenna to switch it to mini whip. This is where I've got a bit of a problem. This is crazy. The only station I receive is the local station and I receive it very, very badly. Now, I'm not sure why. I'm going to try and swap out some tubes. It's a hell of a lot easier than uh, testing all of them and see if it makes any difference, and I'll report back. Well, I've changed the ECH81, and I have noticed a difference, but only on FM. Listen to this. Try a bit of tone. That's quite a difference. Okay, enough of that, but the uh, AM is still pretty dead. Let me try changing the EF89. Well, that did absolutely bugger all. No difference. So the EF89 seems to be fine. It's not the issue. And I tested the EABC80 or replaced the EABC80 and I got the same result. So it's... Um, it's not the tubes, the only exception perhaps is this um, ECH81, which seems to be a little weak, and it did improve a little bit, but the problem is not, is not the tubes. So what else could it be? Let's have a look at the schematic, maybe it'll give us some ideas. This is what we've got. Everything in red has been replaced, everything in green has been checked and is okay. I haven't drawn the lines because most of these I felt I didn't need to. And um, I'm trying to figure out why the AM is so dead. We know the oscillator is working. The oscillator section is this section down here. So the oscillator is working because it is tuning. This thing is getting its voltages, which I did check, by the way. I don't know what the voltages are supposed to be, but you get an idea whether it's receiving B plus or not. And what else is there? Then it goes through the first IF over here. And then it goes through the EF89, which is also working. There's a second IF. Now, these things could be completely misaligned. I don't know if anybody's missed in here. There's no wax in the, in the slugs. So it won't tell us whether someone's been in here or not. We've got the antenna in here. This is the, the FM dipole. This is the AM section. So the AM antenna is effectively this guy over here comes through here, 
goes through the front end and then it comes to be mixed. This is really, really simple. Mind you, it's only one AM band, so you don't need much. You've got the trimmer capacitors and the, the inductor here to, to align the frequency or align the front end, which I will be doing. But there's not much here. There's no switching between long wave, medium wave and short wave, so it's a lot simpler. And you can see the same idea with the oscillator section. So the AM or the 455, I think it's 455 IF. It says it here somewhere. There we go. 445. That's strange. Okay, well, it says 445. We'll check. 10.7 for the FM as usual. That is more normal. But then everything comes through here. We've changed or tried with a different EABC80 because this diode, this over here is the AM IF uh, transformer, second IF. So that'll be using this diode to detect. If this diode was bad, this uh, replacement tube that I put in would have shown something. Uh, could be something inside the IF can, but I really doubt it. Well, I'm going to have to think some more because this thing is as deaf as can be. The FM seems to be fine. That's not a problem. The switches have been cleaned. So that's not an issue. Oh, there is something I want to raise here. I looked up um, other restorations and I read this and I couldn't believe it, but it is true. This is the phono. In fact, it's it's sort of not it's not telling us anything here about it being a phono or being a record out but if it was a record out these resistors would be much bigger so this is a phono pickup and in fact it provides for a stereo phono pickup because what it does is it takes that guy there that guy there and it goes through these two resistors and it effectively sums them before sending them to the volume control now this is the normal thing with phono except it normally would go through a switch and it doesn't go through a switch and then I read somewhere that what you do is you take the uh, medium wave and FM switch, the selector, the band selector, and you move it to the middle. So it's not touching the U and it's not touching the M. In other words, it's not set to FM and it's not set to medium wave. And you sort of hear silence there. You should hear silence there because this signal won't be going through and neither will this one. So there's silence over here except whatever comes in at this end because that goes straight to the volume control. So what you do when you want to hear a phono, <laughs> what you had to do is you move the switch to the middle. It's not even got a click there. It's just between two limits of the switch. Put it in the middle so it doesn't touch anything and you've got your phono. It's, it's actually quite clever. It, <laughs> it's lazy, but it's quite clever and weird. I mean, why didn't they just make this a three position switch? Yeah, so that you could select uh, phono. Even if it was a question of silencing the uh, FM, silencing the medium wave, and just allowing the phono to go through. Obviously, this, uh, this is permanently connected. If you put a phono signal in here and you put it to, to FM or medium wave, both these signals will come through depending on the relative strength of, of the phono. It could sort of play over the radio signal, but if this is very weak, that'll just swamp it. So it is, it's it's efficient, but it's a little bit lazy. But I'll have to try that when I'm, I th I'm thinking of putting Bluetooth on this, which is a challenge because this is very, very small, but I'll try that. So we're back to the deaf AM band. I'll have to do some more thinking and let you know. All right, folks, <laughs> watch this. This is to prove that sometimes you're good and sometimes you're just lucky. Watch this. It's on AM. This is from the Canary Islands. The local station, which we could barely hear. It's receiving it perfectly fine. And you know what I did? Absolutely nothing, except I pulled this out of that. Because, watch this, if I put it on again. So, Canary Islands. With no music, watch this. And it makes sense. It actually makes sense. And the reason it makes sense is the way this antenna switcher is set up. This is when I have it on Miniwhip. This is when I have it on FM. 
Now, these two go into the back. Normally, they'd go into the antenna sockets for the AM. One of those legs is usually ground, and the other one is the, the input of the front end. In the FM, this just goes to that uh, coil that's the front end of the antenna circuit. And because I was connecting the, the uh, one signal line to the antenna input, and the other one to the other side of a very low impedance coil, I'm basically shorting out the signal. So with AM, if I wanted to use the MiniWhip properly, I'd have to take the one connection on there and just touch it to ground, not put it into the dipole input at the back, that antenna input at the back. With the AM, you should only use one antenna wire going into that socket. I didn't know this, and therefore I was uh, racking my brains for no reason at all. So we've got this thing working, which is great. I'm happy. Later tonight, I'll try it again, make sure I get all the usual stations. At this time of day, which is about midday, it's normal to not get much at all. But at least now I know the issue of very low signal has been resolved. Okay. <laughs> yeah, as I said, sometimes you're good, sometimes you're lucky. This time, just lucky. Okay, so we're ready to do an alignment. I'm going to do the um, AMIF. It says 455 on the instructions, and it says 445, but I think... I think it'll be 455. So I've got a signal going in there at 455. The amplitude I've made it will make it as small as possible, which in this particular signal generator is 1.4. We'll see how much we need later. I've got the modulation at um, type is AM, depth 30%, and it's a 1 kilohertz tone. Let's hit it. It comes down to the attenuator, step to switch to attenuator, it goes in there, out there. At the moment there's no attenuation, we'll see how much we need. As usual, it's going into the grid of the ECH81, and then ground to the chassis. I've desoldered the speaker and just connected it to these connectors, because I want this to go to my workshop speaker, or my test speaker, which has a switch allowing me to connect it between speaker and a dummy load. And I've got this across the speaker, so I'm going to be measuring the AC voltage. It's a 1 kilohertz tone that I'm measuring. And they tell us we should try and set it, set the signal strength to about a half a volt. Now this is on the 2.5 volt range. They want us to set it to about half a volt. You don't want it too, too strong. And that is at maximum volume, which is what I've got. And the tone control set to max as well. And the IF transformers that I have to adjust are the inner ones. So that's one there, that's one there, and then of course the correspondent ones on the underside as well. Those are the four that I'll be adjusting, and we'll be watching the meter to see which gives us the, uh, the highest signal strength. That'll tell us that we've peaked it at the IF frequency. So let's look at the meter and start doing this. I've switched it on, it's warming up, and I'm going to put this to speaker first. Oh, we can hear it already, and it's very loud. So we have got much more than half a volt. Let me put the volume. The volume is on max. And I'm going to start adding attenuation on here. Let me try Let me try 6 dB. Not enough. Let me try 12 dB. That's a 2.5 volt scale, so it's about 1 point something, so it's still too high. Uh, it's just under 5 volts, under 0.5 volts, which is not a nice place. I don't like this particular area to adjust. I like to have the meter more or less in the middle. But I've got a solution for that. I'm going to use my voltage multiplier, which means I take the input signal, connect it in here, connect this to the meter, and I can adjust it. I'm going to give it 10 times, so I'll put this on the 10 volt range, switch it on. Ah, that's nice. That's about where we want it. Now I'll make sure that this is peaked. So our tone is on max, and we need to put the volume on max as well. That's a perfect place to be. Now, all I need to do is adjust these guys and the bottom side for a peak. There's not much to it, is it? We're getting just a little bit of increase on there, not much. Let me go to the underside and do the same. I'll just keep watching the meter. I've got to make sure I get the right ones. It's the ones that are on the inner section. There we go. You see, it is that one. 
and I'm going to peek it over there. And now the other one. These uh, cores are very loose. There's no wax or anything like that, so they perfectly they are moving perfectly, which is great. Now, of course, we've got to rinse and repeat. Make sure we're getting the most out of it. Be careful, there's mains voltage over here. Actually, I've just realized something. This is actually 600 millivolts. So technically, I'm doing this with too hot a signal. So let me get this down to 5.5 volts again. Let me give it a 3 dB attenuation. Make it as small as possible and try and peak it again. So it's just so that your AGC doesn't kick in and blur the results. No, that's perfectly fine. Go back to the underside and do it again. About right. I might have got just a little bit more out of that. That is our AM IF alignment perfectly aligned. One task down, a few more to go. Setting this up for the FM IF alignment is pretty similar. You set the signal to 10.7 megahertz. The amplitude, I'm leaving it at 10 millivolts, and you'll see why in a second. I'm actually going to do a modulation, because I want to hear it, and the type will be FM. I leave the deviation at about 25 kilohertz, a 1 kilohertz tone, and it's on, and it's going out there, and it's still going through there, but just for convenience, I'm not uh, putting any attenuation on there for now. And the signal is actually being fed to the shield around that um, FM tube. I desoldered the ground lug or the ground braid from the ground, from the chassis ground to the shield. So the shield is floating and the signal is going from ground to the shield. So it's getting induced, it's getting coupled, lightly coupled into the tube itself. And the reason it's uh, 10 millivolts up there, I don't know how much I'll need, but the reason it's quite strong is because this is a capacitive coupling. Therefore, I put it at a higher level. And the reason I've got a tone on there is so that I can hear it. You can hear it, right? Now, I'm not going to be using the tone when I do the alignment. It's just so that I know that it's there. It just helps. Okay. Now, what do we need to adjust? Well, they tell us that for the FM, it's those outer ones. That one there and the one below. That one there and the one below. But this one at the top is the discriminator one, so we leave that for last. And there are two more that we need to do on the front end, and they're actually those two over there. And it's pretty easy to see from the schematic which ones you're uh, adjusting. That's L5 and L6. There's 13, 14 down here, and then there's uh, 17 and 18, with 18 being the discriminator one, and it's at the top. If you look at the schematic, you'll see exactly what it is we're, we're adjusting. Now what I'm measuring is the DC voltage, it's actually a negative DC voltage, across the discriminator capacitor, and I need to peak them so I get the highest DC voltage, and that's being read on the multimeter, and what they tell us to do is to set the signal level, meaning the signal level from the signal generator, because the volume has no effect, okay? So put the volume down, set the signal level to about 4 volts DC, it's actually negative, I've got this on negative DC, so what I've got there is 3 point something volts. That's good enough. Okay, now I'm going to start adjusting. So let me get this in here. Remember, it's the outer one. And look at the meter. There's our peak. Now the top one.
That was a bit of an improvement. Try again at the bottom. Okay, those two are done. Let me go to the front end ones now. Some people will tell you the order matters. Quite frankly, I haven't found any difference whatsoever. So I just do it. in the order that's most convenient. That's pretty high. Now that's a little bit high, so I'm going to drop the amplitude. I'm going to drop the amplitude to 5 millivolts RMS. You should see that come down. Actually, it's too low. Let's leave it at about there. That's 7 millivolts. Let's make it 6 millivolts RMS. And I'm going to adjust the other one. That's peaked. Try again with the other one. That's peaked. That was a peak. Now, there's one more to do. As far as peaking is concerned, I can only do that one because that's the discriminator one. So let's do that. And that's peaked. So I'll probably just go and check through these again and make sure that I've got the optimum result and then I'll look at the, um, the final one, the discriminator over here. Now to adjust that 18, the discriminator core, it's slightly different. You go across the discriminator cap and what you do is you take two resistors. They say 50k. I've got a little rig set up here that's got 220k. It doesn't matter as long as they're exact the actual value is not that important. Try and get two resistors that are very well matched. So from here, I've got a clip that goes to that 220K resistor. There's another clip on the other side of the discriminator cap, 220K resistor. At the junction of those two, I connect the meter, one leg of the meter, and the other lead of the meter is connected to the audio output. So the connection between, uh, what do they say? Resistor 21, capacitor 38. So that's over there. And now what you should use is a zero or center null meter. They suggest that you use a one of those meters that's zero at the middle, at, in the middle, and then positive and negative, and they want 50 microamps. I don't have one that I like, so I use this one. And what it means is that I need to get this to zero milli microamps. I've got it on the, that's 100 microamps. That's on the 10 microamp scale, so I can get very precise here. And what I can do, I need to adjust it till it comes down to zero. If I adjust it further, it'll go negative, And I can see that by flipping the polarity switch over there. And then I bring it up again till I get it right on zero. Now, I need to make sure that I see that crossover. So let me get the screwdriver in there. It's going worse. Now, let's see. that. If I go that way, it goes to the top and then it stops. If I go this way... Now I've got to turn the polarity around and it's climbing on the other side. So I found my spot and the spot that I want is absolute zero over there. My discriminator is now perfectly balanced. So that's done. Now that's not too hard, is it? And as I mentioned before, the best way to know how, what you're doing is to look at the theory and probably one of the best ways that I can offer for you to look at the theory is refer you back to the Back to Basics series where I go over each stage and explain why it's done that way and why it's done at all. And that'll give you an insight as to what it is we're doing. And it makes it a hell of a lot easier to do it this way or to do the, the actual alignment once you know what it is you're doing. And of course, the one thing you've always got to be careful with is this thing's got live voltages. So take care. Do not get zapped. It isn't fun.
And then of course you can't forget to solder that shield back to ground over there and resolder the speaker wires. So we're good, ready for testing. And of course testing FM in the evening is difficult because all they've got is music, but they're all there. Yeah, FM is there. Let's try AM. And again, I've got to remember not to connect this antenna to the other side when I put the mini whip on. Buenas noches. En el sorteo del Eurojackpot de ayer, la combinación. Muchísimo. Y también por el presidente del gobierno socialista. Yep, it's all good. The reason you get uh, repeated channels or repeated stations on here on various frequencies is because uh, these are stations from the Canary Islands and they've got repeaters on the various islands. Now, because I'm in Madeira, we're sort of getting line of sight to various islands, so I get various uh, repetitions of the same station. But it's all there. So, as far as the IF alignment of the AM and the FM, this thing is done. And I don't think I could get it more optimized than I did. So the next stage would be to do the RF alignment, which is basically to ensure that the front end is optimized and that the, the dial pointer corresponds to the frequency you're you tuning to. But I've still got to print out that little um, dial pointer and put it behind here so that I can see where I'm aligning to. In order to do an RF alignment, I needed the dial. Now this particular radio is strange because if you put this into the uh, into the cabinet where the dial is fixed, you really can't get to the alignment points. So I presume they did all the aligning outside of the uh, of the radio and then you know put it in and they must have had some sort of jig like this, which is exactly what I've done. I've reproduced the dial. I've actually reproduced it, not just copied it because I'm going to have to replace the original dial. I'll be printing a new version and sticking it on because the one there is a little bit faded. So I reproduced a copy of this, try to place it in terms of orientation perfectly in the front here, and I'm now able to see where the point is going. So what we need to do to do the RF alignment, and this uh, I'll start with the AM, is we need to check two points. They give us two points. One is 550 uh, kilohertz, and the other one is 1450 kilohertz, and we have to adjust three components to get the uh, perfect alignment and also to get the strongest signal coming through. Now this means you're aligning the oscillator and then you're aligning the front end. Now this is a bit strange because I think there's only, from what I see here, there's only one oscillator adjustment and it's actually a, um, a coil up here. It's on the FM front end block. Now this is strange. Normally it's not in the front end, the oscillator adjustment, but that's the one that responds. So the uh, oscillator adjustment is over here, it's L10, and then the uh, strength adjustment, the front end alignment, is over here. So it's that coil there and that capacitor there. Now, the first one they tell us to do is send a signal of 550 kilohertz, and I'll be doing that through the uh, from the signal generator. It's a 455, or is it 450? I beg your pardon, it's 550 kilohertz with a modulated tone on it. You have to feed it into the front end again, the grid of the ECH81, just like we did with the IF alignment, except now you're actually sending like a radio signal, okay? And then we've got to see where we get it on here and adjust it till it's uh, precisely at 550. So I've got the signal generator set up, very similar to the previous setup we had, except now it's 550 kilohertz. There's a tone on there. I'll put some volume up and 
go to 550. Now the single's coming in, and I want to see where I receive it. There's, there's 550 there. It's pretty close. I can put the volume down. We don't need the volume for the oscillator adjustment. So what I'm going to do is put it exactly on 550, and I'm looking at it head on, so I don't have a problem with parallax. Give it some volume, and now I'm going to see if I can get it there. Yeah. There's my 550. Now what I need to do is adjust to that coil on the inside for the strongest signal. So now I need the meter. And usually we're basically aligning the front end. I've got my I've got my multiplier a little bit too strong here, but put it on 10 volts. Okay. And I'm going to align this till I get the strongest peak. Yeah, well, one of those one of the meter connections that come loose, so unfortunately this has got to be done with noise. Let me try that again. Yeah, it is peaking, but I think there's another peak somewhere here. Yeah, it's peaking almost all the way out, which is a bit strange. Never mind. What I'll do is I'll adjust it with a station. Now the next one is the 1450, and that's exactly the same, but with, let's see, 1450, and this is only, this is only um, a front end alignment, not. It's spot on there. Let's see if I can get any change here because I need to adjust this capacitor. There, that's peaked. Now I don't like this idea because it's sounding like there's very little effect when I change those. There's one, there's some effect on the 1450, but very little on the on the other one. So I'm going to try something else. There's definitely something wrong here. So I'll have to try it with the station. I think that perhaps with um, with the signal generator going into the antenna port, even though it's set up as a dummy antenna, something is wrong. Something is definitely wrong. So I'll have to try something else. And what I'll do is I'll find a station at one end and one at the other end. I know the alignment is fine. The oscillator alignment is fine. The dial point is correct. I'll just peak this for the strongest signal. Okay, that's as much as I can do with the RF alignment for the AM band for medium wave. Right, for our um, FM RF alignment, they give us two points. One is 88.5, the other one is 98. And we have to adjust, at 88.5, we adjust L3 and L4. So one is the oscillator, and that is, I'll show you in a second. One is the oscillator, one is the front end tuning. And for 98, they tell us to adjust C12. Now, I cannot find C12, but I think I know where it is. I'm looking at the drawing here. I see a capacitor, and it shows it. In fact, it doesn't label it at all. So I think that's C12. But let's let's first find out where it is. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use my little ELV, set it to 88.5, and I'm going to put the signal on. So now I'm going to tune to 88.5, put the volume up. Is that the absolute right? Not there. Where the hell where is it? Oh boy. This thing is picking up at... Ooh, about 91. So I believe it's that one and that one. I'm not sure which is the front end and which is the oscillator, so I'm going to just try it. Oh, that's definitely the oscillator, so I'm going to move it closer. Actually, now I can just put it on 88.5. 90. 
So 88.5 is the absolute right So that's it, 88.5. And now I've got to peak the signal with this guy. And I'm not sure if we're going to get that again, but we'll try. Not getting much change on here. This screw has been tampered with. I think that's about as good as it's going to get. Now they tell us to go for 98, so, okay, and tune to 98. It's getting it on 97, so I'm going to try that capacitor now and see if my guess is correct. Oh. There's a strong station on 98. I'm going to have to put this on 99. So That's just a strength. That's just the strength. I'm moving that further away so I can get this thing. There's my strongest signal. Now let's see how high this goes. I'd like to get 101.6, but I'm putting this at the top end. Huh. That is 104, so I have stretched the band, which is what I wanted. It's 103 on the dial. Well, it's actually 1, 101, 102, 103. I think it's actually correct. Where's my station? 101.6. This dial is not well aligned. But I really don't know how to improve it. There's my 101.6 and it's showing it at 100.6. So it's sort of out by one megahertz. But the important thing is, I'll see what my main stations are. That's one of them. The other one is 89.3. 89.3. Yeah. It's sort of there. And what is the other one? 96.3, I think it is. 
see if it's yep okay so it's receiving all the stations it's receiving all the stations I want and I believe that I've uh, optimized the signal strength so this is the way it's going to be I'm getting uh, all the stations that I normally receive on here and I was receiving I was missing one of them and the reason was this thing was completely shifted the 88.5 was all the way over there so it was very very shifted and now I think I've got it done so RF alignment done I made a slight adjustment to this. They tell us to set this to 88, and 88, I believed, according to those markers, was right at the end. Well, it can't be, because it tells us that this thing receives between 87. So what I did is I put it to the end. In other words, I moved the 88 a little bit further up. So at the end, it would be, at the lower end, it would be sort of 87. And then it, what it's done is it's actually moved the whole band it's corrected the whole band, and if you look at it here, I'm listening to 101.6. It's supposed to go up to 102, and I'm listening to 101.6, and it's near as damn it at 101.6. So this is more like it. I'm happier now with the RF alignment for the FM. I think it's more correct, and in fact, it is very correct now compared to some of the ones I've seen. So yeah, okay, that is done. So here she is. Everything has been cleaned, repaired, restored. I've done as little as possible so that um, I don't actually take away from the originality of this thing. But if you look at it, everything is nice and shiny. Some of the back panel was cleaned up because there was a spot of rust. I removed the serial number label, which I'm going to remake and restick on there. Yeah, I mean, look at it. It looks beautiful. The way they've uh, fitted this together astounds me. It's all so compact and everything fits. Everything's in its own place. The one thing they have done is they've used a slightly different FM front end, which has the same condenser for the FM as it uh, does for the AM. So that's obviously different. Now the dial, I've remade it, redesigned it with a graphics program because I want to replace the one that's on there. The one that's there is a little bit dull and faded, so I'll be putting a brand new dial on there. I've done this before, I just print it out on some thickish paper, cut it out, and it comes out beautifully. The other thing I need to produce is the back cover. I wanna reproduce uh, a new one. I've got a new toy, which is gonna make that job very, very easy, but I'll let you in on that in the last video, because for now, I'm going to leave you and um, start working on the cabinet. There's quite a lot to do, and I wanna make this thing absolutely perfect. So that's where I'll leave you for now and I hope you've enjoyed that and if you have click like, share, subscribe and all that jazz and if you want to support the channel directly you can do so on Patreon. Once again thanks for watching, bye for now and most of all stay safe.